artists concerned with physical journeys explore their relationship to place. This can take the form of artists engaging directly with the landscape, documenting a journey from A to B, or exploring issues related to migration. Land artists such as Hamish Fulton and Richard Long use walking as a way of exploring landscapes. A central characteristic of their practice is a direct physical engagement with the landscape. Fulton's time as a student at St. Martin's College of Art in London and his journeys in South Dakota and Montana in 1969 encouraged him to think that art could be how you view life and not tied necessarily to the production of objects. He began to make short walks and then to make photographic works about the experience of walking. Think about the implications of this for a minute and whether or not you agree with him in that the walk itself could be considered the artwork and not necessarily the physical production of some kind of art object. This work evokes the experience of a walk in Bolivia that Hamish Fulton shared with Richard Long in 1972. The photographs denote time through the setting sun or shadow line and movement, the actual walk itself. The right hand and centre photographs were taken at some point on Iampu Mountain. The shadow line is made up of reeds taken from Lake Titicaca and pelican feathers. They were left there in the snow. The title refers to the bird that circled overhead during the journey. Fulton has said about works such as this, what I build is an experience, not a sculpture. Fulton records his experience of the walks he makes in poetic texts. In Wind Through the Pines, the things he sees, hears and experiences are transformed into descriptive sentences or single words which together evoke the sense of journeying through a landscape. Although only Fulton experiences the walk itself, the texts and photographs he presents in exhibitions and books allows us to engage with his experience. Land artists often use maps as a way of recording their interaction with the location or landscape. A hundred mile walk records a walk Richard Long made on Dartmoor during New Year 1971 to 72, repeatedly following a circular route. Long drew a circle on a map and used this as both the framework and context for his interaction with the landscape. In the work, he records his internal feelings and thoughts as he walked through the landscape as well as his external experiences during the walk, such as his experience of sounds heard on the walk, how he became aware of the presence of rivers as he approached them, pockets of sounds in gullies, and how the sound disappeared behind him as he walked on. The work concerns both the internal feelings and thoughts of the artist and the external aspects of his experience during the walk. Long's epic walks also resulted in temporary sculptures in the landscape. Guided by a great respect for nature and by the formal structure of basic shapes, especially circles, he stressed that the meaning of his work lay in the visibility of his actions rather than in the representation of a particular landscape. This formative piece was made on one of Long's journeys to St. Martin's from his home in Bristol. Between hitchhiking lifts, he stopped in a field in Wiltshire where he walked backwards and forwards until the flattened turf caught the sunlight and became visible as a line. He photographed this work and recorded his physical interventions within the landscape. This piece demonstrates Long's focus on the visibility of his actions rather than in the representation of a particular landscape. So consider this for a moment. Is the art here in the action that he undertook or is it in the photograph he took of the action? What do you think? Long has commented about this work. Nature has always been recorded by artists from prehistoric cave paintings to 20th century landscape photography. I too wanted to make nature the subject of my work, but in new ways. I started working outside using natural materials like brass and water. 
and this evolved into the idea of making a sculpture by walking. My first work, made by walking, in 1967, was a straight line in a grass field, which was also my own path going nowhere. My intention was to make a new art, which was also a new way of walking, walking as art. Edward Ruscher also explores his relationship to place in the form of journeys through the urban spaces of Los Angeles. His relationship to LA also reflects his life journey, moving from his hometown in Oklahoma to the big city. Los Angeles had a lot to do with uh, my feeling about, about art and the world and everything. I came from uh, sort of a almost backward place in Oklahoma. When I came to California, it was very sparkly, glamorous, and so it was like a new world to me. An accelerated culture that I responded to. For his Sunset Strip portfolio, he photographed every single building on the Hollywood Strip in LA a mile and a half strip of Sunset Boulevard in West Hollywood. In doing so, he not only gave a sense of moving from a point at one end of the strip to the other, but also captures the history of the city and provides a snapshot of its socio-economy as reflected in the changing nature of the buildings and businesses. He's distorted the negatives with razor blades and sandpaper, signaling the, pas the passage of time and the decay traditional photographic processes, at the same time reinforcing the place's deterioration and decline. The erosion of the surface is reminiscent of palimpsests. In what other ways could this work be reconstructed to become a palimpsest? Pause here and brainstorm your ideas. Another approach to exploring physical journeys is through migration. Whether enforced through slavery, through escaping war or disaster, or triggered by economic needs, migration has played an important role in the lives and histories of many people and is a theme that has been widely explored in art. Ellen Gallagher's Irish and African American origins have shaped the texture and subject matter of her practice. In this large and complex work, Gallagher engages with a long-standing interest in the narratives surrounding the slave trade. Bird in Hand seems to refer particularly to the experience of slaves on the Cape Verde Islands off the west coast of Africa, the birthplace of the artist's father, a region which prospered from salt mining and was for three centuries a hub of the transatlantic slave trade. The enigmatic one-legged protagonist of this painting suggests those Cape Verde slaves who developed a knowledge of seafaring to become sailors and sea captains. Pegleg is a recurrent character in Gallagher's work. For Gallagher, Pegleg implies travel and worldliness. Hermann Asselbergs has also explored the subject of migration and border zones, which have emerged as a result of globalization with a focus on investigating the visibility or invisibility of migrants and the relationships between documentary and fiction. For example, for his film Capsula, Usselbergs recorded the ferry journey from Algeciras to Ceuta, the Spanish enclave located in Morocco, chasing the geographically ambiguous edge of Europe's southern boundary, which many Africans attempt to cross illegally. What is interesting about Capsula is the way Asselbergs describes the lack of anything to see on the journey between one place and another, despite the fact that 1,000 migrants drown on the Strait of Gibraltar each year. In his voiceover, he says, for all the constant circulation of explicit media coverage exposing, go exposing global misery and pain, you note on the journey to Ceuta a remarkable lack of truly memorable images of this death zone. Keeping these people off screen as much as possible seems part of a policy to render their lives present as a threat. His exploration of the dynamics of visibility and invisibility is fascinating, as he comments later on the constant recording of images around Suta. On the outskirts of town runs a fence equipped with video cameras, magnetic, seismic and infrared sensors, all uplinked to satellites to allow remote viewing from a central command post. 
you are, of course, not allowed to film. At this point, he revisits the earlier comment and says, keeping these people on screen at all times seems part of a policy to render their lives invisible. His interest lies in the politics of appearance, in terms of tracing a geography where migrants are rendered largely invisible. The people who are desperately trying to get into European space are visually erased. In that sense, his film, which shows no migrants, repeats the invisibility that occurs in reality. The film's present is that by rendering invisible those who want to enter Europe, we erase their lives and their deaths. Erasing, uncovering and revealing are all processes related to palimpsests. If this was a palimpsest work, how do you think it could be rendered? Pause here and brainstorm your ideas.